container if anyone has it. Welcome back to another Reality Check VR video. Today we're going to be talking about Echo Combat, as you just saw. We were lucky enough to play Echo Combat during the closed beta, which happened just about a week ago. But don't worry, if you want to play the game, there's still a chance to get into the open beta, which is opening up on June 21st. And although there is not a release date just yet, the game will be costing $10 when it finally does come out. Okay, so the question you're all probably asking yourself, is the game actually good? Well, if you played Echo Arena, where you're flying around with the discs... Get it, Blue! Boom! That's how you're supposed to celebrate. Or if you even played Lone Echo, the campaign game, you'll know that flying around in anti-gravity in VR works. And not only does it work well, but it's really, really fun to do. And people who get queasy very easy, like myself, can actually have a really good time playing it as long as you get used to the controls, which doesn't take very long to do. So basically, when you're playing Echo Combat, the things that are different that you'll notice right away is that you actually open yourself into the same lobby as Echo Arena. You fly in, and, and, and rather than going to the Echo Arena area on the right, you've got a new area on the left which says Echo Combat. And when you go in there, you've actually got a little spot where you can change your outfit. Reality check. Wait, you gotta come this way first and change your uniform. So you change your outfit from a normal Echo Arena outfit to actually an Echo Combat outfit, which makes you a little bulkier, a little stronger, and you're a little bit slower too. So you'll notice right away, if you're used to flying around in Echo Arena, that you're going to be a little bit slower. So you start going down in there, and the first thing you'll see is they've got new areas, they've got a practice area, uh, they've got just different things that you can do in general. And, and to start with that, uh, when you go to the platform, on the left you'll notice they have the repair matrix and the threat scanner. The repair matrix is an actual device that you hold in your left hand, and when you click it, while you're playing the game, it actually heals you and any of your teammates that are around you, it actually sends out a beam to your teammates as long as they're within proximity and heals them as well. It's really, really cool and it's a really sweet feature to have. You've got to be able to make sure that you remember to use it, number one, and then you want to use it at the right time so that you can keep your teammates alive during the gameplay. Uh, number two, there's the threat scanner that's on your left hand. The threat scanner is basically like a proximity device that shoots out like an, uh, an echolocation, if you will, and, and it allows you to see where the enemies are. As long as they're within that sphere bubble of your proximity, you're going to be able to see enemies behind objects, and you're going to see an outline of them, which allows you to shoot them much, much easier. The threat scanner allows you to plan things more easily. It allows you to have a better strategy and just keeps you in the know where the enemies are at all times. It's nice to have at least one teammate that has the threat scanner while the other two teammates have the repair matrix and can keep everything everybody alive and that seems to be the best solution from what I played so far. In the center you've got a thing called a detonator and that actually is a little grenade that sits right above your shoulder. Uh, during the beta there was a few problems with people not being able to grab their grenades but I'm sure they'll fix those bugs when the game actually does come out. So for the time being what you do is you reach your hand back and you grab a little grenade piece and when you throw it It'll just go out there. If it gets within proximity of people, at least I believe it, it blew up when it got within proximity. Or you can just click your button on the trigger and it also blows up. So it's a really nice way to be playing, shooting, grab back, throw a grenade, blow it up. It's just, it's a lot of action going on at once. Now, of course, Echo Combat means there's going to be fighting. There's guns in Echo Combat, and the gun actually is attached to your right hand, so what you'll see is when you pull it, it, it kind of folds out of your hand, which is really cool because if you're an android, you're a robot. So, of course, everything that you use is a part of your robot suit. Uh, the first gun is the Pulsar gun, and it shoots out like a rapid-fire lasers. You know, got your, it, it's kind of reminds me of a plasma rifle in Halo. So it's, you know, your Pulsar is your plasma rifle. And then next you've got the Nova. The Nova gun is like a little miniature shotgun. You know, you, you've got a little tiny gun, you shoot it, and it has a spread of bullets that pop out. So this is perfect for close range, especially when you're getting right up next to people. Uh, it, it can devastate the enemy, that's for sure. But the moment you start getting far away, it, it, it's useless. It's, it's very useless at long range. Thirdly, you've got a weapon called the Comet. And the Comet is basically your sniper rifle. Uh, when you're just kind of floating in the air, 
there and you hold down the comet, you'll see a little laser pop out and you get one shot. You can hold up the shot. So you can hold the button down, it charges up the shot, and boom, it'll shoot it. If you hold it too long, of course, you'll discharge and then you won't be able to shoot it. So you want to make sure you let go before the discharge moment happens. Uh, what's also cool is that as you're playing, if you actually like grab onto a ledge, you'll notice that your laser will go all the way. So your laser only goes a certain distance up until you kind of actually hold yourself onto something and that allows the laser to go the rest of the way. So when you're actually playing the game, the first thing that happens is you get loaded into a, a little room that allows you to talk to your teammates and you've got this big mini map in front of you and you can actually see the entire map. Uh, not only that, you can see your other you know, enemies that you're going to be fighting. You're either going to be on offense or defense and when you're looking at the team, you can see like a little miniature version of them. You can see their names which allows you to know who you're playing against. And then of course if you're on defense, you get to jump into the arena first and find kind of a, you know, a little strategy to see where you want to sit. And when you're on offense, you're just waiting in this mini-map area, and you can actually watch the defensive players and see them where they're actually going. So it kind of helps you know where people are at. When you're in there, you can quickly look at it as you're trying to travel. Um, every time you die, you go back to the same area, and you have to go hold an orb to teleport back into the main area. And when you do that, you're able to see where people are at, which is just helpful for strategy. Um, so once the game does start, you get thrown into a big arena. You've got an offensive position and a defensive position. Basically, the offense is trying to take their payload, which looks like a giant swan car, and it just goes on this little conveyor belt all the way to an end goal. And then the defense is supposed to prevent this swan from getting to the end. And along the journey, there's actually a few checkpoints. There's at least two checkpoints in this level. And if they get to the checkpoints, obviously that's where it starts at. When you're playing the game, there seems to be a really good strategy of if you have three people and three people, you want to try to pick off the other teammates so that they only have obviously two against three and one against three. And if you can keep them kind of coming back uh, and not teaming up, then you're going to be very successful. If you're a team that's getting, you know, if you're losing, what you really want to do is you want to make sure you gather your teammates back together and you kind of create some kind of a strategy. You don't want to go in one at a time. If you go in one at a time, you're probably going to be devastated. Not only that, when you're on defense, if you stop the payload, if it hasn't made it to a checkpoint, it actually will start to go backwards to go back to where it started. So when you're on offense, you got to make sure you're touching the actual swan. If you're touching it, it starts to move forward. If your teammates come up and they start touching it too, it starts to go forward much faster. So the best thing to do is try to kill the defense, jump on the swan, have everybody hold it and go as fast as you can. When the defense comes, you want to part away and you want to try to pick them off again. Um, I, I did get to play with some of the developers and they mentioned how there's going to be several more maps. I'm sure there's a lot more strategy involved in the game and they do have a few updates and things they're going to be adding to it. So I certainly haven't seen all the weapons, I certainly haven't seen all the add-ons. From what I've played so far, the game is very promising. It's very fun. There's nothing quite like shooting somebody and jumping off an object or quite, you know, you can, you can really monkey yourself around the area and then, and then have fun taking care of the enemy. I certainly had a lot of great moments myself. I'm really excited about Echo Combat and I can't wait to play more of it. I was lucky enough to get to play Echo Arena back when it first started during the closed beta and I'm excited to see the changes that happen with Echo Combat because if you played Echo Arena, you'll notice the game changed quite a bit from day one. There's a lot of rules that changed and just a lot of optimizations that made the game a lot better. So with Echo Combat, I feel like it's going to be the same thing. The team behind it is a very great team, and I'm excited to see where it goes. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the game footage that we've got right here, and look forward to seeing some more stuff coming out after June 21st. And then of course when the game releases for 10 bucks, you're gonna to wanna to pick it up. I, I think that's a great deal for a game that offers so much. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and it's getting late, it's kinda of overcast today. Um, we're gonna to talk more about this stuff later too. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys, I'll see you guys soon, bye. Accelerated. Delivery accelerated. Good defensive skill if they actually work this right. Yeah, you. We got it. Payload returning. Tactical mod recharged. Ordinance regenerated. Payload mobilized.
seconds remaining. Tactical mod recharged.